Today, today we're doing a repair on a Ford Territory. It's a 12 month 2005 model and it's got the 6 speed auto in it, the ZF6HP26 in it. Now the owner brought it in um, slipping like mad. Um, there's also a bad vibration and thumping as you're driving it as well. So could be a, a uni joint or a a rear transmission mount or something along those lines. So I'm just gonna, I've just taken it for a test run and confirmed it and um, we're gonna put the scanner on it and just check the oil level, make sure everything's all right first. Here we go, we've got two codes. PO736, reverse incorrect ratio or slipping, and a PO735, incorrect ratio. We can see in that short amount of time the um, Pan's leaking there. Looks like it's on that plug. So I'm just going to have a bit of a squeezy if there's any other leaks anywhere. You can see the majority of it's leaking on that plug there. Uh, it's a little bit damp around that mechatronic plug up there as well, if you can see that. So it's just the old usual problem, leaking at the pan and at the mechatronic plug. And we can see the center bearing vibration the rubber's perished in it as well so got to replace that it's always a good idea to just mark where the tail shaft is that way it eliminates any uh, possibility of a um, vibration or the transmission and drive line feeling different than what it did before you started doing any work so we're just going to whiz that tail shaft off as well and replace that center bearing. So it's just a 10 mil Allen key fitting. We're just going to take that plug out and drain the oil out of it. And the oil is pretty dark, as you can see. And on the territories, while that's draining, I'm just going to loosen this little cross member bolt and just remove these three. And then I can just swing it out of the way, just so I can get better access there to the front of the pan. And just also on the tail shaft, these little plastic bits as well as acting like a lock so um, they don't come out those bolts they can also act like a like a balance and you'll see that one of them's got a little bit more plastic on there so just mark which one goes where it's just a good idea to put it back to exactly where it was and these CV type um, uni joints it's always a good idea to just put a bit of wire there just so it doesn't come apart on you while you're working on it now trying to get this tail shaft out it was actually stuck up here on the yoke 
So what we had to do is we hooked up a chain with one of these just to put tension on it and slowly worked it out. And if you have a look, you can see it's all rusted on that little shaft there. So a bit of stuffing around to get it off, especially because this rubber it's a bit springy when it when you're trying to pull it out. And all that just to replace this center bearing. And there you can see it had a little bit of rust on there. So I've just cleaned that off with a bit of wet and dry. And we'll put we'll repack that with grease when we're putting it back on just so it doesn't get stuck on there again. And there's the other end there, you can see how it's all rusted in there. There's a little seal that's supposed to keep all that uh, moisture out of it, but um, obviously it got in there. You can see how much rust's in there, I don't know if you can see that. So I've scraped it away a bit, and we'll just repack that front part of that tail shaft where it goes onto that um, shaft that comes out of the transmission yoke with a bit of grease just so it comes out easier next time. Now I've just popped the um, two outer unis, uni cups out just so I can undo this. Now I tried to get it in here but um, the shape of the yoke it won't allow the spanner to, to turn so I had to remove it. Um, I'm not going to go into it, um, you can watch that on, a, on another video how I do that. Um, but one important thing to note is just uh, the direction of these slots, if you want to put it the same way as what it was, um, you put the slots towards the front of the car. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace that centre bearing. And there's, there's the new one. And that actually goes like that, so it's the slots go to the front. I don't think it, I don't believe that it matters, but it's always a good idea to put things on or back on the same way as they were. And before I forget again, just mark where the splines are on this before you pull it out as well. Um, it could possibly throw out the balance. Um, so again, it's a good idea to just have everything lined up the way it came off. Just with a bit of uh, white ink or white out or liquid paper. And I've just made sure I've lined that yoke up with that little mark I've put on the splines. Okay, there we go. We've made sure all the marks are lined up. We've put the new center bearing on, new universal joint on. This one's um, got a grease nipple as well. So if you've got one with a grease nipple, just make sure you put the grease nipple pointing towards the end where there's more room so you can get the uh, grease gun on there. Anyway, on to the transmission. Okay, we've got the plastic pan off. And you can see with the plastic pan, the filter's incorporated on the pan. So you've got to replace the whole thing. The magnets are on there as well. And what we're going to replace that with is a steel pan. But in the long run, it ends up being a lot cheaper. So you only need to replace the, the filter pan gasket. Um, if you're doing one of those kits, you need to change the bolts on the pan as well. They'll come in the kit. And you can see the magnets are also there. And these ones can be removed quite easily to um, clean them when you do the service. I always like to leave them up on that little ridge there like that, just so you can get the magnet working top and bottom as well. So basically that's, that's a steel pan there. Um, take off this little protector cover. I think they just put those on there um, just so it doesn't rip the, the packaging when it arrives. And the pan gasket. Just make sure all the holes are punched out. Sometimes, or quite often, you'll find that the, 
the cork still in there when they punch them out. So it just saves you having to poke it out later. Sometimes it won't come out as easily as you think. So I'm just going to change the mechatronic sleeve as well. Um, it's, it's a little bit oily around there if you can see that. Um, so I've, I've shown this in other videos. They're pretty much the same, same deal with all the 6HP um, ZF transmissions. Um, you just un, unwind that little, little tang there and that plug will come out and then you press this little little button here and slide that slide it down if you can see that that's a little fork that holds that mechatronic sleeve so it doesn't come out and then you'll be able to slide it out and replace it just don't forget to push it back up when um, when you put the new sleeve in And this is down. Just slide it out. And you can see the seals are really flattened out, so that's probably why it was leaking. And you can see they do a few of the ZF 6HP uh, variations in the transmissions. And it's got the, just make sure it's got the O-rings on there. Slide it in. Just one thing to take note of is just make sure you um, line that little, little lug there with the slot in the transmission. You won't be able to get it in otherwise. There we go. We've got the new one in. And just make sure that little pin, it's probably at around 4 o'clock. If you're looking at the front of the car, um, that's the position of that little pin just to slide it in and just slowly work it in. Also a good idea to put a bit of oil or something on the seals that will just slide in a little bit better. And don't forget to push the little locator back up and that should go up fairly freely. There we go, we've got the filter in place. Just make sure you have the O-ring on there. And if you can have a look, just under there, there's these little, um, like little pins that locate there as well. Just stop the filter from moving around. And of course, clean the pan rail. Scrape all that road dirt off. Now it's just a matter of putting the, the pan with the pan gasket back on, uh, the metal pan. Like I mentioned earlier, I just like to put these magnets up on the on the ridge there, just so they can work top and bottom. There we go, we've got the pan on. I've put it all on loose, I've put all the bolts through. Because they have a large pan gasket, sometimes the pan gasket will be a little bit out of shape, so it's a good idea to yeah, put all the bolts in before you tighten them up, just in case one's out of whack. And I also forgot to put that plug back in over there, so I'll do that as well. Push the plug in and just pull that little tang down and it'll just pull the plug in until you feel a little click and that should be down probably about four o'clock as well there we go all right now filling these you can either fill them here on that plug there or this one's got the filler plug on the side which is probably a little bit easier to do so, but they're a universal one, they'll do the BMWs and the, um, the Fords. So, important not to um, overfill it, uh, I mean, fill it to over 50 degrees. It should be, I think, between 30 and 50 degrees, and the oil should be just coming, weeping out of here. If it um, goes over 50 degrees, you just have to let the motor or the transmission cool down until it's under 50 degrees with the motor running and it should be just coming out of there. 
and I'm using the Tritec ATF synthetic low viscosity oil and that as you can see will handle the the ZF lifeguard 6 um, transmissions that um, that are needed. So the lifeguard 6 oil is very expensive so I use an equivalent here yeah, anyway. So we're just going to top it up till it's coming out, start the vehicle for a moment and then top it up till it's coming out of that hole again and then we can keep the motor running and just top it up. There we go, we've put two litres in and it's just started to come out. So I'm just going to go and start the vehicle up just for a moment, just to pump it back up into the transmission. And there we go, just put another, about another litre in and it's just starting to drip out again. So now I can keep the motor running and just top it up just till it starts coming out of there. and back in the park and we can keep the motor running now and another probably a litre and a half the motor running and it's just started coming out now so I can just put the plug back in there okay we've finished our work made sure everything's back where it was made sure we've tightened everything up and double check everything another thing that I like to do is just double check these drain plugs and filler plugs um, when they come out of the factory they could be potentially loose or not you know someone's forgotten to tighten it up properly and also the cross member just make sure that's all back where it was just have a good look around um, you can watch my other videos uh, for the ZF6 HP26 um, it just shows you a few other little tricks as well Anyway, I'm off for a test run. Um, uh, before I do that, I'm going to just clear all the codes that were there and retest it when I get back. Just make sure the codes haven't returned. And it's not slipping anymore. And we're just back from the test run. Everything's shifting as it should be now. And no, no codes. So job's done. Thank you for watching.